so hi guys it's me deepak and welcome back to another video this video will be about clustering and we will going to tackle some basic questions about what is clustering so clustering is basically organizing data into classes or grouping them it belongs to a category of unsupervised learning but what that's supposed to mean i mean you all know what is it but what that's supposed to mean so let's burn through this question today and let's get started so to start with what is unsupervised learning so when i say unsupervised learning i mean the there is no label data the data set and you have a limited knowledge and you go into you go into the you know the data set the models go into and with the very limited knowledge and try to group them or cluster as it is a clustering algorithm it need to group them or cluster them cluster the data sets but why clustering what should be the motivation here as you can see there is one way of clustering the data sets but but while clustering while grouping them our motivation should be to have a uh, very low inter class intra class distance and maximum inter class distance so the early one had a large intra class distance and a low inter class distance so that was not a fine one so here similarity will be inversely proportional to distance the more similar they are the more close the data sets will be and the and the more and the more distance they have the more dissimilar will be and scattering coefficient will be the ratio of average inter class distance divided by average inter class distance and the lower the scattering coefficient will be the better will be a clustering model so now let's see what is the dendrogram so this will be you will use this to uh, see the level of similarity between so the similarity in the dendrogram is shown by the height of the lowest integer node this year so by in the starting every object belongs to a single a cluster and when we join and as we go up we join the two, two clusters into one based on how similar they are and how much they resemble so in this example i show how these how i basically show them like these two are they went to a it's just a basic example there could be three objects that were similar and come into first cluster and then so on so it's just an interpretation of how uh, how we cluster in the bottom up approach where we start with every data object belong to belong to a cluster and as we move up the whole data set the whole, all the objects will be inside one cluster and in the in the so in the most upper internode the similarity between the objects will be the lowest and the similarity in the low, lowest internode will be the highest and the level of similarity will be the lowest will be the height of the will be the lowest height of the internode so let's see a top down approach you have a whole data in the starting you have a whole data set in the cluster but before that you need to find out how to calculate the distance between two clusters so it it is it can be a single linkage where you have the two closest data sets of two clusters and you take the distance it is a complete linkage the distance between two farthest objects and then there is an average where you calculate the average distance between the two clusters So three we are calculating the distance. Now let's see what is the minimum spanning tree. And no, it's not a Orion constellation. So, so minimum spanning tree they have a minimum possible total width edges. They are non-cyclic and undirected. So you can connect them in any direction. So that's not a purpose here. But the widths are the basically the widths are the connection that have the lowest width there. So to see how the problem works, work, you first compute a minimum spanning tree. Then to because everything is in a cluster you first you make a loop and divide the biggest edge with the heavy weight edge to create two new clusters and iterate through the loop until every single object is a cluster so earlier it was everything st started with every single one was a cluster moving up to every uh, to a huge to the whole data set being in a cluster here from big uh, data set of a cluster down to where every single object is in a cluster so there are two ways of uh, grouping them so it's a time costly one as the mean time complexity will be big of n square so let's see partial clustering here so so in partial clustering you have a uh, you have everything divided based on a 
sort of criteria like distance and every uh, every object belongs to a certain group and the group are not overlapping and here the number of clusters are are already defined and you know you predefine the group of cluster before going into the algorithm so k is fixed here so for an example of so let's see an example of k uh, partial clustering k mean clustering so as i said earlier the k mean clustering will uh, have fixed number of clusters k will be predefined here and we, let's say we choose k equal to 3 so we have a unlabeled data set here and we start by initializing three k's here so the position of this k will be random so as i have chosen k1 k2 and k3 and now the third step will be to assign the membership of these objects to the clusters so in the beginning the objects will be assigned randomly or to the nearest k clusters so the first interpretation will not be the most accurate one neither will be the second one so you can see i have drawn a line to show how this occurs just to give you a proper view and then we change this position of these clusters and if the object change a membership if the object first belongs to the k2 and all belong to k1 that means the the first interpretation was not the right one and now we need to redo by changing the position of this cluster uh, these case enter clusters again and the process and this repetition and this loop will end will break when after we change the position of this case enter cluster the objects don't change their membership that means we have find the correct groups we've divided them in correct correct groups and that's what case mean clustering means so here we have unlabeled data set and after applying k-mean clustering we can divide them properly so guys that so let's now see the strength and the weaknesses so the strength will be that the time complexity is big o of tkn where t will be iteration k will be clusters and m will be number of objects which is better than the time complexity of our high clustering which was at least big o of n square and the weakness will be that it's sensitive to noise and that the number of clusters has to be predefined so i think that's it so if you have any questions comment down below and if you have any future suggestions and also like and subscribe if you like this video